It's looking good for Australia. After two sessions of play in the WTC final 2023, they are 170 for 3. 1 for 98 in that session. There was some early joy for India. The wicket of Manas Labushin soon after lunch, courtesy Mohammed Shami. We've seen spin for the first time as well, and it raises all sorts of questions uh, from both camps. So let's look back at that session, which was led by Travis Head, who picks up from where he left off in that series against India and now has registered his highest score in Test cricket in England. He is 60 not out and looking very good. So on ESPN Cricket for Match Day, powered by Adidas, we ask the questions of Brad Haddon and first Sanjay Manjrekar in studio. Is it easier to call now which team is in front, Sanjay? Yes, and the way the pitch is also now showing its colours and uh, the kind of bowling options that India have. We saw Jadija bowl and I was uh, very interested in seeing how the pitch is responding. Mm. Jadija, one ball turned mildly, mm. <laughs> so yet uh, I don't think there is much there for the spinners. Uh, Umesh Yadav, reluctance for the Indian camp to go back to him, so that's Correct. a bit of a worry there. Shardul Thakur was the pick of the Indian bowlers, surprisingly, uh, not for the first time. Mm. So it's looking, yeah, a lot of good things to note from the Australian camp. India have some work to do. Mm, sure. Travis Head is the star of that session, Brad. And you rightly pointed out at lunch, they one or two or three wickets, and it's a different game we're looking at. That one wicket of Labushin might have kept the game open. But what a fine, shall I call it, counter-attacking innings from Travis Head. Yeah, it's a perfect start for India with Shemi getting rid of Manus Labushin with a, a beautiful delivery, nice and full, got through the defensive. Minus Labashain, but it was the way Travis Head is scoring his runs. He, he's he's counter-attacking, as you said, and, and what that has done is taken a lot of pressure off Steve Smith. He hasn't had to worry about the scoreboard. We know he likes to get in his bubble and bat long periods of time, but it's Travis Head who's counter-attacked and kept the scoreboard moving to have put the pressure right back on the Indian bowlers. As an attacking batter yourself, Brad, I wonder, I wonder if you can break down Travis Head's batting style because it doesn't look like he plays ultra-aggressive cricket like England do, and yet he's going at strike it over a runner ball, you know, it, there seems to be some sort of controlled aggression to him. How do you sort of sum up where his game is at right now? Yeah, it, it's interesting because he's, he, when he started his test career, he's in and out of the team, but the, the one thing they've done uh, really well, the Australian selectors and Andrew McDonald, he, he's trust Travis Head to play his game style, and his game style is to counter-attack, very similar to to what Adam Gilchrist did for Australia. So they've trusted him. You know he's going to get out ugly ways, Travis Head, but the good in Travis Head when he does get going is exactly what's happening now. He keeps the scoreboard moving. He bats in partnership well with the other batters because it, it takes the attention away from them because he's scoring so quick. Hmm. Also, the important thing to note is that it's not in your face counter-attack. Yes. And the first few boundaries that he hit, it was almost like things happened instinctively. Yeah. And the right kind of shots that he wanted to play in those conditions in England where he allowed the ball to come to him and he wasn't sort of pushing at the ball. It was more touch play, playing the ball under his eyes, which Steve Smith also does. So, along with the approach, you need some degree of uh, batting technique, hmm. style to survive and both of them Back foot players played the ball late, so there was something that was happening which is just right for English conditions. So Travis Head, his great, uh, I think, um, the recipe for success is that he has an attacking mindset, but just that he plays the ball late, late and there's no sort of flourish of the bat and mm -hmm. going after the ball too much. It was just uh, meeting the ball and just feeding of the pace and the outfield is getting quicker. So it was almost instinctive rather yeah. than pre-planned in your face counter-attack. Mm, yeah, and as far as India's bowling to him goes, did he seem to react very well whenever there was an opportunity for a boundary? So did they bowl poorly to him? Uh, it wasn't very obviously poor bowling, but what's happening now, because of the change of format as well, you've got two batters who are playing on the back foot and Dinesh Karthik in, in the coverage, uh, in the world feed coverage, showed us the meeting points of Steve Smith. And these are batters and the kind of you know, meeting points you don't see very often. And these are bowlers who played a lot of T20 cricket. So suddenly, uh, they're under pressure because the batter is playing the ball very late. So when they're playing the ball late, you've got to be damn accurate. If somebody's onto the front foot, just mm. around short of good length, that ball can be good. But if you're playing it late, you've got to make sure that the ball is still very close to the batter, which means hard sort of lines, good lengths as well, slightly short, you're going to get cut. So people, when they start playing off the back foot, 
the bowler is under a different kind of pressure and that is the pressure I thought uh, some of the Indian bowlers felt. Uh, Shardul Thakur constantly looking for wickets and hands, a little expensive, but he's a guy who will keep yeah. you know, trying the Yorker. We saw the Yorker, we saw a few bounces. So India trying their best, but I guess uh, the batting of these two mm. you know, guys together and the technique that they showed just made things difficult for India. Mm. All right. Uh, Brad, you point out that Hedge Innings has taken pressure off Steve Smith. Do you sense this is a typical? Steve Smith innings, is it not as comfortable as we have seen him before or is that just going to happen in a matter of time? I, I think Steve Smith's just playing his role. He's playing second fiddle at the moment to, to Travis Head. He's, he's getting inside his bubble and, and we know that's where he likes to, to bat. He, he doesn't look rushed. Um, he's scoring at his own pace. He doesn't have to worry about the scoreboard because the way Travis Head is scoring. The, the one thing I, I would have liked India to do though with, with Travis Head, he was 28 of 20 balls to start his innings and that's been the norm for him for some time now and the only time he really looked um, in any danger was the short ball. Um, I, I think sometimes you, you've got to change your plans up um, to different batsmen. Travis had someone you can go after early with the short ball and make life uncomfortable for him because he, he wants to feel bad on ball but if you go short at his hip um, and just under his arm that's when he looked most vulnerable at the start of his innings. So Maybe when they come back after the break, they can use someone like Yadav to go short at Travis Head, aim at his shoulder and see how he reacts there. Mm. So then is it fair to say that India once again tactically have been slightly behind the eight ball? Yes, you can say that. And again, during the coverage, we saw pitch map where anything around good length was going at a strike rate of 100. Anything that was full was going over <laughs> and anything that was short was about 40. So clearly India missed a trick there and this is where... Uh, you know, sometimes I just wonder whether a blueprint before getting into the game is the right way to go. I, I, you can have a general idea as to how you can maybe tackle the session, yeah. a general approach, but then mm -hmm. you've got to sense something there. You know, one ball to a batter and he feels a little uncomfortable. You dump the original idea and go hard at that batter with that particular tactic. Now that he's set, passes yeah. 50, that same tactic may not bear fruits you know as easily and that is where again Mahindra Singh Dhoni who we talked a lot about you know during the IPL is a guy who thinks on his feet mm. he doesn't have any you know massive plans before. well his test captaincy has often been criticized yes but well. that was you know my take on Dhoni has been that he's just been too wise for his own mm. good because when he went overseas and he saw the kind of bowling attack that he was faced with 2011 when Zahir yes, Khan hobbled sure. off on the first His resources day of that were thin. Praveen Kumar was leading that uh, attack mm. and he immediately realized, boy, he's got to be defensive right through the series. So that was the only being too wise with made for boring cricket. Yeah. But thinking on your feet always has its uh, you yeah. know, great values. Would you sense that that's what you've, you've felt as well, Brad? Just looking at how India have tactically approached both sessions, that this doesn't quite look like a dynamic sort of, uh, you know, set up into after winning the toss and bowling first? How would you describe how they've gone about their business? Yeah, I think at times they're, they're bowled um, with, with some really good discipline. Um, other times that they've probably tried to overplay their hand and that can be a little bit too with sending an opposition in. Um, when they sent the team in, it was overhead conditions. There's a lot of pressure on the, the four fast bowlers to get early breakthroughs there, especially after leaving Ashwin out. Um, the sun's come out now and we know at the oval, yes, the wicket might look green, but it's more the overhead conditions that, that play a role with what the ball does. So I, I think India ha have to find a, a different approaches, as you said, just to stop the scoreboard, um, slow it down. Travis had someone that likes the scoreboard ticking. So if they can slow the scoreboard down. I, I like what I've seen from Dadeja, though. When he went mm. over the wicket, there was a, a little bit of doubt there from Travis Head. Mm. So oh, I think that's something they can explore this session too. Mm. Absolutely. And I mentioned uh, before as well that, uh, you know, Jadija is one of those very few left-arm spinners who has almost a similar record against right-handers v left-handers. I remember him making Alistair Cook's life in India miserable as a yep. left-hand batter. So I'm, I, I think he might be your one bowler from an end. Now, Shardul Thakur, people are suggesting, is a guy who India use as a bowler to tie up one end. Shardul Thakur is not that kind of a bowler. He's yeah. one who will give you breakthroughs. Umesh Yadav also cannot be that bowler who will tie up one end. So maybe Jadija can be that bowler. 
And Shami, after he got that wicket of Labushi, and I thought that would be Shami now doing only one thing, bowling exactly the way Shami does, but a lot fuller. But didn't quite see him make that kind of an impact after a great start in that second session. A mm. uh, couple of points on Brad's comments on Jadeja's inclusion. 38 overs before we saw spin. Was that a few overs too late? And we also saw Jadeja start round the wicket to Travis Head. Was that a surprise as well to you? Mm, uh, not sure. It must be the comfort level of Jadeja. And Jadeja likes to go over the wicket when there is a rough there. So obviously he's trying to go against the face, create the angle he knew. The ball wasn't going to be turning back. I would have gone with Jadeja in the first session itself when I saw the seamers weren't quite finding uh, their rhythm, the line and length. Uh, you'll see how Australia will use Nathan Lyon and how they've used Nathan Lyon despite having three or four quality yeah. seam bowlers. They get Nathan in, Nathan in very early amidst you know, the seamers having a pretty uh, good time in the middle. So I thought Rohit Sharma went through all his seamers mm. and felt mm, none of them was having much of an effect. That's when he introduced Jadija. He could have been introduced much earlier, the moment one of his seamers wasn't looking as potent. Yeah. 51 overs in, you sense they're already thinking, might have got that Ashwin call wrong, or is it too soon? So pitch reading is a very difficult thing to do. Mm. And that is the fear we all express at the start, that I hope they haven't read too much into the greenery that we saw on the top. Because the soil, the, the other problem in England, and Brad will know that, is when you look at the pitch, a lot of the time, the soil is not exposed to you. You just see the grass on top. Yeah. And what's underneath is something that, you know, in India, we see the clay, we mm. see the soil, and we have a great idea about how the pitch is going to play. In England, the secret is hidden mm. under the grass. So what you see is only the exterior, which was green and which may have got India to, you know, a bowl first. And there are some wise heads there. Rahul Dravid has been to England. He would know yeah. what to do. But underneath the soil, now that you know, we are hearing Nasir Hussain also talk about it, it's a bit dry and that might just come into play. Yes, Brad. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think that's a really good point on, on the wicket in the, in the UK. It, it looks from a distance where it's got a lot of grass on it. But I heard Ricky Ponning talking on the, on the coverage. He, he just said, I hope India haven't picked a team just for this first innings because underneath that um, green coverage of grass is quite a dry wicket there at the oval. Um, the, the heat comes out, it, it will take turn. But I think for India's blueprint in this last session, did, did Asia to me look like he can play a role? He can hold up and end and that gives you the opportunity to, to use your quicks in, in different ways. Um, you can use Siraj and Shemi to to bowl the way they do and bowl to their strengths at their experience enough and their wicket taker bowlers. Maybe Yadav can be used in this session to to make life uncomfortable for Travis Head and Steve Smith, use some short balls and and maybe Shadul can be used with that new ball to, to swing it around then. So mm. with today's bowling the way he is, it gives you opportunities to, to use your quicks in different ways. Mm. You go with that? Brad is already talking about the second new ball, I think, when he mentioned the <laughs> new ball. So <laughs> he thinks the Australians mm. are going to be batting long here. But I completely agree. Yeah, mm. yeah Jadeja B or, you know, one end... Uh, holding up bowler, Shardul Thakur cannot be told how to bowl. I mean, you just sort of, he's one uh, guy who you give license to, like you do yeah. to a batter. The other three now will have to change their ways a little bit. Siraj, Shami were your go-to bowlers when you won the toss elected to bowl first. They've got to be a little more conservative. Bowl in the channel, keep patient, which they can do. And Umesh Yadav, now that you know the ball isn't swinging too much for him, mm. then maybe use the short ball because he's got that skiddy kind of, you know, short bouncer that can trouble somebody like Head. Mm. All right. Uh, do we see much of the same from an Australian point of view, Brad? Head continues going at between an 80 to 100 striker. That's, or do we see someone like Steve Smith maybe up it a little bit? Will it get any easier for the two of them? Is this the kind of session where Australia can really stamp their authority? Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll see much of the same. Uh, I think India have got the opportunity to, to get Travis Head early. Um, he's someone who likes to feel bad on ball, especially at the the start of each session so if they get their length right to him and maybe that's a short ball as as we've spoken about can can shut the scoreboard down there and, and steve smith you just got to try to get him outside his bubble um and the way you can do that is is keep him away from the strike um if you shut down the scoreboard with travis head maybe then he'll try to do something that he hasn't tried to do and, and take a risk and that's where a wicket um can, can be created but India just got to think they're two wickets away from Alex Carey. He hasn't had a great timer 
uh, against India of late with the with the bat and and the tail. It'll be hard work for the tail to to score runs on this wicket. It's just doing enough. So if India can have the mindset of just finding two wickets, things can still happen mm. fast for them in this last session. The real bonus for India is the kind of battle they've got out already. David Warner was looking good and yeah. he's got a double hundred recently. Seemed like this was going to be one of those innings in between failures where he gets a big one. Usman Khwaja, the kind of record and sure. kind of appetite that he has, he's a big hundred mm. getter. And on this kind of a pitch, day two, flat pitch, he would have just gone on and on. And Manas Labushain as well. Yeah. So that is the advantage India have. A couple of wickets and who knows, you're then into Alex Carey mm. and the rest. And that's why, you know, at the start I said, Guys who are batting at number five, six, seven could hold the key. Cameron Green has the ability, so if he contributes, then sure. he shuts India out. But India have the bonus of getting those, you know, big informed batters out already. All right, let me get a quick comment from both you batters on uh, the one wicket that we did witness in that session. Now, both of you did say India have got to be fuller, and I think they were watching our show at lunchtime, Brad, because Mohammad Shami was full right away. Now, did Labushain just miss a straight one? Oh, no, I don't think he did. I, I think mm. Sammy showed his class, actually. He's, he's gone off after uh, the first innings, had a look, I'd imagine, the footage and, and realised he, he had to get the ball a bit fuller. We know how skillful he is to to hit the string, um, and he did exactly that. He, he beat Marnus Labuschagne with a, a really good delivery, and, and we need to see more of it this session. Mm. That was the fullest ball he bowled to Labuschagne. So was that just someone saying something to his ear at the lunch break, you think? I always have an hypothesis as to what could have happened. Sure you do. Obviously, there was a talk. We have got <laughs> to get that ball full. And that was the fullest ball that he bowled in yeah. that inning. So clearly, Shami did something different. But if you look at the ball closely, nothing much has happened. It hasn't swung in the air or off the pitch. So I'd like to believe Labushain was surprised with the length of the ball. Yeah. Standing outside the crease, he almost yeah. sort of got himself yoked a little bit. Missed that ball by quite a margin, so it seemed more a surprise. I'm just imagining if he was told by Shami, okay, this is the one that I'm going to be pitching right up. And Labushain would have driven that, you know, through the covers for four. But he wasn't expecting that. And I'm a bit of a skeptic with this technique that Labushain mm. had for this particular inning. Because the guys who are scoring more freely and looking comfortable are guys who are playing the ball late and off the back foot. Mm. All right. Half past midnight in Sydney. You hanging in there, Brad? <laughs> I am hanging in there. It's an enjoyable test match so far. And as we said, Manus went early. If, if India can find a couple of wickets early here, it's game on this last session. You seem to be wanting a couple of wickets early throughout of here. It's almost like uh, if, if India sort of strike you, that'll keep you awake. Yeah, that, that, Brad, that's you're tired Australian, of watching. Yeah. Brad, that's an Australian and which I've always admired. Like Chappelle is yeah. the Australian that I got to know first. They just want to see a yeah. good contest, isn't it? But right, Brad. You just want to see good cricket. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And and we can see that both ways. If, if uh, Travis Head gets in, he can take the game right away from India in this last session. And from an Australian, we're hoping to see that. But there's still enough on offer if India get the ball in the right position. So uh, I think we're going to see some wickets this last session. Okay, I like it. Brad's already taken me. I was thinking, should I go into a prediction <laughs> mode in Test cricket or not? But the, the tea time shows where I can do that. So Brad says we might see some wickets here, right? Or can we see much of the same? And Australia could... Uh, will their way to a nice 280, 300 for three even with the extra half hour. So he says we could see some wickets. Sanjay? I, I'm not going to answer this. Who knows? I mean, it will be based on nothing. <laughs> You're you supposed know. to know. My prediction would be based on nothing. I, I, you know, a couple of wickets could fall. These two guys could remain not out. Everything's possible. There's nothing there out there for me to say, you know, this is most likely to happen. So There's a nice I, big I fence up. for you to sit on. Yeah. All right, so let's <laughs> end it there. Umesh Yadav has the ball in hand. Pick up the chat with Brad Adin. Thank you very much, Brad and Sanjay Manjrekar at uh, Stumps on day one. Final session, long session. Watch out for that extra half hour to complete 90 overs. Weather looks great though at the oval. Sun's out. And let's see if the second new ball, the more or increased use of spin, could uh, change India's fortunes. Otherwise, it looks like Smith and Travis Head are looking good to uh, hang in there at the end of the day. Join us for post-match analysis or end-of-day analysis on uh, ESPN Cricket for Match Day, powered by Adidas. And download the mobile app. It'll have you covered with the very latest, not just from this test, but from the world of cricket as we look to dissect how these teams go about in pursuit of winning their first WTC final. See you at the end of the day. जिस पे नाम सिर्फ एक का हो लेकिन हो पूरे
देश के नाम उस चीज को हाउ डू आई डिस्क्राइब इट इस जर्सी के लिए मेरे फीलिंग समझाना इम्पॉसिबल है पर इसे पहन के आई फील जस्ट वन थिंग इम्पॉसिबल इज नथिंग